Hello everyone. What I'd like to show in this video tutorial is how to create a user interface by typing almost no code in the main.qml file. Rather, I'll be dragging in components from the components pane and then adjusting those components using the QML properties. So what you see in front of you is the default hello world that is created upon a new main.qml file. And I'll go ahead and put this into horizontal split mode so we can see the preview as we go along. The user interface that we're going to create I've already created in a separate QML file which is a character selector screen for my rock paper scissors app. So let's go ahead and go back to our main.qml and get started with this. We don't want anything that's already predefined other than this, the import bb cascades, the page and the container. So let's go ahead and get rid of everything else that's in there. So the first thing we're going to do does require a little bit of typing into the main.qml file, and that's to create a background. And to do that, you type background color dot create, and then inside of that you'll use a hexadecimal color. I'm using a color that I previously used in the Rock Paper Scissors app to add conformity to my my app. So the next thing that you'll see in the f final thing is a character selector text or label that's centered. So to do that let's go ahead and add another container then inside this container we would like to have a label and here's where we'll start adjusting some QML properties and this is where we will write character selector Oops. and we'll go ahead and change the size to be a little bit bigger and then this container we will adjust the alignment so it is now centered. And as you see, my preview is updating in real time, as well as my code is being properly formatted by the system. That's it for this container, so we're going to go ahead and add a new container. And this is where we'll house our list of selectable characters. Our character list should have more than three characters once once we're all said and done. So let's go ahead and make this a scroll view by dragging in scroll view and then inside of that scroll view we'll drag in the radio group. Here's the second time we'll have to add something to the actual main.qml file which is options. And as you see an option has been created. But once you're inside of option you can you get a new QML property screen and here's where you can add the text of whatever the option is and then we can go ahead and copy and paste this a few times and then with the copy and paste coming in all funky let's go ahead and do a control shift F to get the formatting and then we can change these options text by going into each one and changing it like so and I'll just leave the others as is for now but like I said we want to have this not take up the whole screen so let's go ahead and adjust the size of this container by adding a maximum height to it so we'll go ahead and add a maximum height of 350 and since we want to letterbox it a little bit let's add a maximum width of 700 and so you can see where this container is let's go ahead and give it a different background color and just to switch things up I won't use a hexadecimal rather I'll use red green blue which max red, green, and blue will 111 will give you white. And then let's go ahead and 
center this container as well. So that pretty much matches up what we have here. Now let's move on to our preview. So below this container, let's go ahead and add a label. Inside this label, here's where we'll call this one preview. And let's go ahead and make that a little bigger. Underneath that, we'll create a another white box or white container that'll house the actual image preview. So once again, I've at, added a container. And then let's drag in an image view inside of that container. Again, back to the QML properties, the image source, you'll see in the project folder, I've added the images to the assets folder. So I will call in the asset image and then populate it with the first one, which is the night. We'll do much of the same things to the container as we did to the previous container. So let's just go ahead and grab this white background again. So we can just copy and paste. And then this time, we would like the, the container to actually be bigger than our, our minimum value. So we're going to add a, a new minimum width of, say, 700 and we'll go ahead and add 550 as the minimum height which is the height of this character drawing and then we would like the image to be centered within it so we'll go ahead and add horizontal alignment center to the image view now let's go ahead and center the whole white container by using the horizontal alignment center property. That brings us to the final container that'll house the two buttons of cancel and save. So let's drag in a new container, new button. First button will be the cancel button. And the second button will be the save button. And then we would like to create these buttons to be next to each other. So inside of the container, go ahead and change the layout to stack layout and change the orientation, which is default top to bottom to left to right. And now they will be stacked left to right. And then to give these a little bit of alignment, let's go ahead and add a little bit of padding to the left and to the right. And just so it's not too close to that container, go ahead and just put a little bit of top padding. And there you have it. We've completely replicated this user interface by typing almost no code into the main.qml file, rather using the components and the QML properties. Hope you enjoyed.